In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to display text using the pen. You'll quite often see scratch games such as this one, which look great, and then the score is displayed using a variable like this. Which is fine. It, it shows a score, it works, but it doesn't really fit in well with the project. So if that could be drawn with pen or in a different style, it would be much better. And so to do that, You'll see I've got a sprite here called text. No coding at the moment, but there are costumes. These are all vector format graphics. All the alphabet A through to Z in capitals and in small letters, and then all of the numbers, and at the end, end marker.costume just to show it's the very last costume in the set. This project is already exists in Scratch. The link for it is in the description of the YouTube video. So a good place to start this tutorial is to load that project, remix it, and then you can go along with the tutorial from that point. So let's go back to the stage. We're going to use the stage to display the score. What we're going to do is we'll have a green flag block. So when the green flag is pressed, and we're going to want to send a broadcast to the text sprite to say what we want it to print. So I'm going to set up a variable and it's going to be for all sprites text dot and I'm going to call it string which is just a computer term for a set of characters and numbers. We're going to and I'll get rid of the score variable now. We'll set text dot string to score colon 8990 and that's what I want to display there. So if I run that, you can see that is in text string now. Now to pass that into the sprite, I'm going to use a broadcast. So broadcast and wait because I don't want to do anything until it's finished printing. And I'm going to call it display text. And because when we're finished, all the code that actually displays any text will all be within this one text sprite. You'll be able to put this in the backpack, add it to any of your projects, and then you will be able to display text in any of your projects. And to do that, all the text code will be kept in that one sprite. And I'm going to call it from the stage. I could call it from any other sprite, but I've just got the stage, so that's what I'll use. And I'll go into the text sprite, and the first thing I want to do here is hide it. Because if it's on display, you see there the red dot is shown. I don't want it to be shown. So the first thing would be when I start, hide it. But if you've seen my other tutorials, you'll know that I do not like multiple green flags. I like to just have one green flag in my code. So instead of using a green flag there, I'll use a receiver. When I receive initialize, hide it. And over here in backdrops, broadcast and await, initialize. So we initialize the codes, set what we want to display and display it. And back to the text. When I receive display text, I want to display all this text. So I'm going to set up an index variable called i for this sprite only. And I'm going to use this to step through each character that I want to display. So we'll start off on the first character, so we'll set i to 1, and we're going to repeat for every character in that string. So I'm going to repeat operator length of, and it's called text string, so length of text string. And for each letter, the first one will be the letter s. I'm going to set another variable here called character. I'm going to use this to store the character that I'm currently on. So set character to letter I of text string. So when I first run this, when I is 1, it's going to set the character to S. Now I want to change the costume in text to whatever the character is, so S in this case. So to do that, switch costume and each costume is called char for character space and then whatever it's displaying a b c d 
whatever. So if I put in here join and C H A R space, don't forget the space, and then the variable character, it will set the costume to car and the first one will be a capital S, so car S. And then I'm going to use pen. If you this is a pen extension, if you don't have it in your project, so you click down here, select pen, and that will add it to your project. So I'm going to change the costume and then I'm going to stamp the costume to the screen. So it's going to stamp it with pen. Then when I've done that, so it will, it will show the letter S and I better put where I wanted to start displaying. It will start displaying in the middle of the screen. So well, I'll just run this code for now, although I do need to change I after each character so that it goes through every character. First time I equals one, it gets the first letter, then second I equals two, it gets the second letter, and so on. And if I run this code, it's printed it beautifully, all in exactly the same place. So after each letter, I actually need to move right. And the distance I need to move right, I know is 22 pixels, because the big, biggest character in this set of costumes is 22 pixels. But instead of using the number 22, I'm going to set a variable called font width for this sprite only and in the initialize I'll set the font width to 22 and after I've showed after I've displayed a character I'll change the x coordinate by font width so I could have just changed x by 22 well this makes the code so much clearer I might wonder why is it 22 but now I can read the code and know that it's moving font width pixels to the right. And the other thing I need to do is the pen is still displayed on the screen. When you're using pen, if you want to remove the pen from the screen, you need to erase all. So in this stage, right at the beginning of my code, I'm going to clear the screen with erase all. Now if I run this code, I've got score E8990, which is almost what I wanted. But instead of a colon, it's giving me an E, and the reason for that is because I don't have a colon defined in here. And the reason for that is I want to show how to add characters. So I'll go right to the end. Now I need to leave the end marker right at the end, so I go to the character before it and duplicate it. I'm duplicating it because it'll match the colour, it'll match the position, it'll match the font, it'll match the size, and I need all of the character costumes to, to match each other. So I've duplicated it there. I'm going to change the name to colon. And I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. If I double tap on the 9, I can then add a colon. And that's it. I've added the colon character. If I run the code now, it's the colon. But it's done two colons. And the reason for that is because there's a space in there. And I've got no character for space. But I don't really need a character for space. Space is just a jump to the right. How far to the right is entirely up to me. So I'm going to set another variable. And I'm going to call it spacing. And for reasons I'll show later, I'm going to make this for all sprites. Text.spacing. And I'll initialize it in there. I'm going to initialize it to a value of 12. And in this loop, I can just say if the character is a space, I'll just move right, otherwise, I'll display it. So if equals. If the current character is a space, and notice I'm pressing space there, it looks empty. If I double click on it, you can see there is a space in there. So if the character is a space, then I'm going to change X. I'm going to change it by text to spacing. Again, it makes it very easy to read the code and very easy to change that follow if I need to. If it's not the space, then I'll just carry on and I'll stamp it to the screen and that change I needs to be out of the if else there. So now I'll go through if it's space, we'll just move it, otherwise it will print a character. I'll run that. Perfect. Score 8990. Now the, I, I want it to display somewhere other than the middle of the screen. I want to control where it's displayed. So I'm going to add a few more variables here. Text dot top to save it where it's displayed vertically and text.left to so where it's displayed horizontally. I'll hide these from the screen. 
I'm going to default to the top left of the screen there. So set text dot top to the top of the screen, which is 180, and set text dot left to the left of the screen, which is minus 240. And all I need to do to get that to work is change the go to x, y there with the variables. So go to x left and top. It's defaulting at top left and that's fine because that's where I want the score to be. So if I run that code, there we go. One thing I notice is that it, it's quite slow. It doesn't appear all at once. And that's because I'm using a loop here. This is where a custom block comes in handy with a no refresh setting. So I'm going to call this custom block display text run without screen refresh. I'm going to take this code exactly the same and put it in there and call it. So it looks like it's doing exactly the same. The only difference is it's running without a screen refresh. And now if I run it, it's instant. It's perfect. So let's see what else do I want to do that. It's displaying the score too large at the moment. I think probably about half that size would be good. So I'm going to add another variable. I'm going to call it text.scale so that I can show different sizes of font. By default, we'll have it as 100, scale of 100, full size. I'm going to add another variable for this sprite only variable, so a little less. And when the scale is 100, I want everything to be times by one. I want it to be exactly as it is now. But if the scale is 50, I want everything to be half size times by half. So that's what I'm going to use this variable for. Set scale to whatever text.scale is divided by 100. So if, if scale is 100, then this will equal 1. If text scale is 50, then scale will equal half. And I'll put that right at the beginning there. And this needs to change now because if I'm moving to the right, if it's scaled down, it needs to take that into consideration. So I'm multiplying everything by the scale. So text spacing times scale and change x by font width again that's going to need to be font width times scale and i'm going to need to change the costume size so i'll switch the costume and then i will set the costume size to text scale because this one needs to be the full amount. Um, if it's 100, it needs to be 100 and so on. So now I think if I run that, it will be exactly the same because text scale is 100. But in backdrop, if I then decide I want to display it at half size, I can set text scale to 50, display it, and there it is. See. So Maybe that's a little bit too small. Maybe I want it slightly bigger. I'll set it to 70. And maybe I want it slightly to the right. So I'll set text left. Instead of minus 240, I'll set it to minus 220. Let's have a look at that. And that's looking quite nice. The wrong colour, but quite nice. But I can easily change a red into white. If I go into text. By changing the brightness of the colour. If I set got the costume, got the size, if I set the brightness to 100, there we go. And that, I think you will agree, is a much nicer way to display the score. In the next tutorial we'll look at extending this so we have more power over how we display things.